welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube. And today's the day. We're going to be talking about the best mineral sunscreens for darker skin that I have tried in 2020. It, it's been some trials and some tribulations, and I'm going to round down the best of the best, so keep watching. So in case you missed any of my mineral sunscreen trials, make sure you check back on my playlist. I'll link up above and below because I've tried a lot of mineral sunscreens this year. And, and I'm a girl who actually really prefers a chemical sunscreen for me, myself, personally. Um, but I did come up with some mineral ones that I really wound up liking. So let's get to it. So the first one, which at the time of me filming this, um, I'm not quite sure where in the schedule that this video is going to get posted and where, you know, the brand may make, um, you know, another announcement or if there's going to be any other additional findings. But Perito, oh, pour out a little, <laughs> little aqua. So in case you haven't heard, um, there is some recent controversy with Perito. Um, in particular, there unscented centella sunscreen. Some people were suspicious that it could give such a high SPF given the filters that were in the sunscreen and uh, Inky Decoder sent it off to two different labs. It came out that the SPF is somewhere between 15 and 19 as opposed to the 50 plus that they have on the label. Now, initially I was like, oh wow, so y'all just gonna be out here lying on your... But <laughs> there are some factors that can go into why a sunscreen can, you know, test differently um, than what the SPF label is. Because something like that happened with ISDEN and it turned out that it was okay. But if you want the full scoop on that, because I don't want to dwell on this too, too hard in this video, um, definitely check out two videos that I've watched recently. Um, the first by the homie Glow by Ramon. Um, he broke it down. And then also Lab Muffin Beauty Science. Um, she did a really great video breaking it down as well and then of course we still need to hear from the brand the brand has since pulled all of its sunscreens from um, you know you can't purchase them right now while they're trying to you know do their own investigation but it's sad because the Perito Comfy Water sunscreen uh, was definitely one of my favorite mineral sunscreens that I tried this year. So it blended in really nicely. You do need to give it a couple minutes to kind of like settle for it. to Because when you first put it on, there is kind of a little bit of a tint, but it goes away after a couple of minutes, thankfully. Some sunscreens, you'd be there for like five hours and that thing is still like tint, like flat out will open your grill. With this sunscreen, you... And with a lot of mineral sunscreens, it's not just this one. You want to apply this in thin layers because if you take the full, the full amount that you would need for your face, which is typically about a nickel-sized amount, um, a quarter teaspoon, or three finger full, three, three finger, you know what I mean, three fingers of um, sunscreen, um, to apply it on your face at once, you're gonna have some problems. It, it is go you are gonna be annoyed. It's not gonna blend in properly. So do thin layers until you have enough. Um, that's the best way to get that to blend in really nicely. Now I would say that if you have oily skin, you would probably really like this because it's very lightweight. Feels like there's nothing on. Um, but that's not to say if you have dry skin, you can't use a sunscreen, uh, mineral sunscreen like this because if you have on the right type of moisturizer um, and then you know your other products in your routine for the season as well as your skin type then you should be fine when you know using a sunscreen like this but if you're looking for something a little bit more nourishing I'll have more that I'll talk about in this video. Next up I really love the Etude House Sunprise Mild Airy Finish SPF 50. These things are a mouthful. So similar to the Perito this one is going to give you that lightweight feel. It's going to be very weightless. It's going to be nice for oily skin. Um, if you have a drier skin type and you know you like these kind of like lightweight sunscreens you know make sure that you, you, your hydration is on point underneath so make sure you're wearing the right hydrating serum or essence or whatever's in your skincare routine and then of course make sure that that moisturizer is on point um, especially for the season right now in New York we're in winter and it's it's, it's feeling wintry. Well, it's actually fall, but it's feeling very wintry. And even me with my oily skin, you know, I needed to up the ante on my moisturizer. But what I also liked about the Etude House is the price point. It was $9.50 when I bought it. It could be a little, you know, a couple cents more, a couple cents less. Um, Cause you know how Amazon is sometimes with their pricing. But I like this one. Again, though, you want to want to apply this in thin layers. Um, because if you just go in with a whole <laughs> gloop and put it on your face and try to rub it in, you are going to be very upset. 
So apply it in thin layers until you get the correct amount on your face. So next up, the Biosense Squalene Plus Zinc Sheer Physical Sunscreen. If you're someone with drier skin or if you have an oilier skin type and it's like, you know, dead of winter, this might be something where you're like, aha, I love this. This formula, weightless, um, it's very hydrating. Um, you're gonna get more of like a satin finish when it comes to this particular sunscreen, which on oily skin can be a lot <laughs> when it's warmer out. Um, I tried this back in, I wanna say maybe March or April when it was still kind of cold out. And then also I wasn't going outside because we were in lockdown at the time. But the way that this blends into deeper skin is absolutely beautiful. I wound up getting it because I saw um, an ad for it or or maybe, I don't know, something on Instagram and Biosans and they had someone with a deeper complexion than mine trying it out. And I was like, oh, okay, I definitely need to check that out. I did, and it was great. So Biosans, you're doing good, you're, you're doing good, sweetie. Now if we can get a formula for oily skin, that that'll be perfect. Now if you have oily skin, like I said, if it's winter time where you are, you might appreciate this one and then you may not even need to put a moisturizer on underneath. You can probably just, you know, have that as your, your last step. So good to go. The only thing is that it's a little bit more than what I, me, myself personally, typically like to spend on a sunscreen. To me, it's like, eh. But you know, y'all got big pockets, so you go on and spend your money on your sunscreen if you want to. Next up, the Coats Flawless Complexion SPF 50. This one is a little tinted. It's like a, if I can remember correctly, it's like a beigey brown kind of color. Um, but it blends into the skin really nicely. This was something that I can't remember if somebody left a comment on a YouTube video or somebody DM'd me directly on Instagram, but they were pretty much like, sis, every person of color needs to know about this sunscreen. Please try it and put it on your channel. And I did, and it is a really nice one. Um, you can get coats on Amazon, and if there are any other places where you can get it, you know, obviously other than their website, I'll link it below. The brand does have like a family of sunscreens, which I love because I do find with sunscreen that for many of us, a one and done formula is just not gonna cut it for the different facets of our lifestyles. Some of us like to wear makeup and you want a sunscreen that's gonna perform well with makeup. Then, you know, sometimes we may want to go be active and work out or climb mountains. And, you know, the type of sunscreen that you would need for that is gonna be vastly different than your, your everyday under your makeup sunscreen. So definitely wanna have a family of sunscreens and Coats has different ones. I've only tried that one, maybe going into 2021, I, I may look at some other sunscreens from them to try out but make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it all right i'm out of the corner there's a little bit of like you know sun going on right here but i think we're good we're better than what it was looking like before so next up one that you can get um as easily as going to your local target or you know shipping it to your house from target is the verse guards up daily mineral sunscreen um, this one's an SPF 35. It glides really nicely on the skin. And that to me was definitely one of the key factors when it came to trying mineral sunscreens for me because my skin doesn't like a lot of friction and some of these sunscreens are like really pasty and you kind of have to do a lot to get it to blend in. So I like that this one was very easy to blend. Now the thing is though, I think if you have normal to dry skin, you might like this more. It can be a little bit heavy on oily skin. Maybe in the dead of winter, this might be, you know, greater for someone with oily skin and then you probably may not need to wear a moisturizer underneath it. It depends, you know, you gotta have to kind of gauge with the temperature and you know, what's going on and you know, what you have on in your skincare routine, yada, yada. Um, but if you have normal to dry skin, I would say that, you know, this is one to, to check out and look out for. So next up, the Peter Thomas Roth Instant Mineral Powder Sunscreen. This is something that I've used for years. I like this especially to reapply over makeup and that's the sole use that I use it for because otherwise, if I'm not wearing makeup, it just seems weird to me to put a powder on my face when I can just slather on, you know, a lotion or a cream, you know? But I love this for reapplying over my makeup. It helps to mattify and take away shine. So if you're someone with oily skin, this is um, something to look into. Now the thing is, it can be a little messy to work with because you kind of have to twist the bottle properly to get the brush to retract into the bottle so that you can put the cap back on and then you gotta push it up. Um, and that can get a little messy 
if you don't follow the directions properly and then you have like products spilling out. So it gets, you know, some kind of like neutral or negative reviews because of the packaging. Some people also feel like the brush is a little bit too harsh on the skin. I haven't found that, you know, it's, it's, I, I love it. My issue is mostly with the packaging, but I've kind of been able to mitigate some of the spillage and whatnot with it by being really, really, really careful. So it's another one I love. So next up from Replenix, there are actually two sunscreens. Now this Replenix brand, I have to say is it's, they're not expensive, but they're also not at that price point where it's like $10 or less. They're like in the $20, $25 range. But when I tell you they might make some of the best mineral sunscreens like ever, they might make some of the best mineral sunscreens ever. So the first one is the Replenix Sheer Physical Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. So this one is a spray. Now the thing with sunscreen sprays that can get confusing to some people is that you think you can just kind of just go like this and apply it and you're done. When <laughs> For some of these sunscreens, that's not the case because for one, you know, you might miss a spot. So you want to kind of spray it in your hand and then put it on your face and apply it. And then for some people, they feel like, well, that defeats the purpose, right? But for some people, this might be a good thing. Like, remember what I always say, there's a sunscreen out there for everyone. So this one, you spray into your hands. It's a lotion, so it's not like um, a mist. So you're gonna spray it into your hands. It's a, it's kind of like a very light lotion and then you apply it onto your skin. It blends into the skin really, really nicely. Now, although it is a spray, just keep in mind that this is not something that you're gonna sp spray to reapply over your makeup because you're gonna mess your makeup up if you try to do that because it is a lotion. But I also kind of felt like it was in the middle where it can be good for most skin types. So you just need to make sure that, you know, your moisturizer and you know, whatever else come you put before your skincare here, um, is addressing both your skin type and the weather where you are. So like right now it's you know, going into winter here in New York and I have oily skin. So I like things that are a little bit more nourishing, but you know, not extremely heavy because you know, I still don't want to overpower my oily skin. So you know, keep that in mind when you're wearing this particular um, sunscreen, but it, I think they make some of the best ones out there. And I also love the Replenix Ultimate Perfection Tinted SPF 50 Plus. So now with this one, it's gonna give you a nice satin matte finish, which I just feel is like, mwah, like I love that. I don't want to be casket sharp matte. And it's hard for a lot of people to pull off that ultra matte look. And then if you have oily skin and you're doing that because you're trying to like not be as oily, sometimes that can be counterproductive and then you wind up dehydrating your skin and then the skin produces more oil as a result. And you're like, oh my God, and your skin's like, oh my God, and it's like a vicious cycle. Don't do that. But what I like about this is it has a nice satin matte finish. So it's not going to be heavy, but it's gonna give you like a nice skin like finish. Um, again, I definitely advise applying this in thin layers. You don't want to take a whole big glop of it and put it on your face. And then also give it a couple of minutes to settle because it can look a little tinty at first, but once it has some time to settle, it'll adjust and not be as tinty. You Another one of my favorites from this year, and this is one that actually launched this year, is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. It came in 18 shades, but I felt like the shade range was wide enough so that they had some good options on, um, especially on the deeper end. My shade was shade 16, and then they had two shades that were deeper than mine. Now, because this is a sheer tinted product, the shade 16 can work for quite a number of people, even if you're not like exactly my skin tone, shade 16 can kind of work for you. Um, this combines makeup as well as the mineral sunscreen protection. So if you're someone, especially we did some videos on um, iron oxides and you know, your mineral tinted mineral sunscreens. Um, if you were someone that was, you know, very interested in that, this is something to look into. Of course, if you you know you like the whole makeup thing, not everyone's gonna want to put you know makeup on their on their face. But out of all the makeup that's out there, I think this one is really nice um, if you're looking for like that skin like look and you just kind of want to even thin things out. Like maybe you have some discoloration, you want to even things out without looking caked up. This has a beautiful finish to it. Now this next sunscreen. The price point kills me, but it has so many good things going for it. So if you're someone where you're like, 
you know what, I've tried so many mineral sunscreens, I don't mind spending a little bit more um, to get the, the, the attributes that I want in a sunscreen, then maybe you look at this one. So this is the Murad City Skin Age Defense, it's an SPF 50. So this one, it's water resistant, it's fragrance free, it has the iron oxides in it, so if you fall within that group that we talked about in my previous video on iron oxide, visible light, and sunscreen, and these are the things that you're looking for in a sunscreen, definitely look at this one, it blends into the skin beautifully. I would say that this is probably geared more towards normal to dry skin, um, but if you have oilier skin, this might be a nice, like, you know, spring, fall, winter. Um, it, it might be a little bit too much in, in the summertime, like very hot tropical kind of weather summertime if you have oily skin, but it's, it's such a great sunscreen. It's just like the price just makes me feel like, ugh, ugh. Oh my God. <laughs> the last two honorable mentions, and it's the Isden Arafatona Ageless and the Isden Arafatona Actinica. Now, these are really cosmetically elegant. They're not fragrance-free, so they do have fragrance in them. So if you're someone who's kind of like, eh, I'd rather not have fragrance in my sunscreen, obviously skip this. The price tag seems a little daunting at first because um, they're, you know, one's for like $55, $56, and the other one's like $66. But these are 3.4 fluid ounces. So if you're someone who's already spent like $25, $30 for a 1.7 fluid ounce at like Sephora or Ulta or wherever. This is very comparable because you're getting double the amount of product in there. So it's, you know, double the product, double the price. These are really nice. I would say that they're geared more towards oily skin because um, of how lightweight and they, they tend to be a little mattifying. They're not gonna be like, you know, <laughs> zapping your skin of oil of its of all of its oils, um, but it does have like more of like a matte finish to it. So those are my honorable mentions. Um, I don't think I'll, you can get them at a ton of places. I bought it at Amazon. Um, it's a Spanish brand that has a lot of amazing sunscreen from what I hear from um, Dr. Cheryl, who was on one of our um, dermatologist videos. But the only thing is that the, the really good sunscreens use filters that aren't available here in the US. So maybe one day, you know, I don't know, take a trip to Spain or maybe, you know. As you can probably see from my picks from 2020, one of my top criterias for mineral sunscreen is that it's gotta look good on the skin because if it does not look good, what is even the point? We are not trying to be out here looking like ghost face killer. And while I absolutely love makeup, as a matter of fact, this channel used to heavily be about makeup, not everybody wants to wear makeup. So, you know, who wants to put on some white chalky mineral sunscreen just to have to put makeup on top of it to get it to look okay. And then, you know, you go and take a picture with flash and then it's just like, Dang, sis, they, they, they put you out there like that. So that's definitely one of my main criterias. For me, with someone with oily skin, I do like for a sunscreen to be lightweight. You know, of, of course, that changes throughout the year, uh, especially in the wintertime. I, I might need a little bit more, but I also have sunscreens that I can use year round and I just kind of switch out my moisturizer. Um, another factor for me personally is definitely price. And then I did include some that were a little above the price range that I myself would pay, but when you're dealing with mineral sunscreens and you know, you, you guys know there's not a ton of them out there in the US. I mean, you go out the US where they've got all the amazing other types of filters and you know, you got some more cosmetically elegant formulas. But for me, myself personally, I just prefer to use a chemical sunscreen. I do these mineral sunscreen videos for you guys because you might do it for my culture. So in 2021, I'm going to, you know, definitely pick up more on the sunscreen reviews. I also want to throw in some more chemical sunscreen reviews as well, um, as well as sunscreens that have filters that aren't available in the US. You know, I would love to have, you know, a couple of different options out here for you. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and you turn the notification bell on so you don't miss a thing. I'm losing my light, so it's time to go. Follow me on social, the links are in the description box, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.